Hey everyone, Pastor George here with our Bible study recap from today. And today we looked at James 5 verses 1 through 12. And I think the good setup for this is to remember what we talked about the last time, not last week, but the last time, two weeks ago, when we looked at James's warning to people who do not consider God in their plans or planning for the future, kind of boasting about what they're going to do. And he warns them and he says, don't say I'm going to go here and make this much money. Instead, say if God wills, I'm going to go and do such a thing. And then he says, if those who know something is a sin and don't do anything about it, then they're then they're in sin. Right. From there, we move into what we have for today, which is the first 12 verses of chapter five. In these verses, he the first six are for woe to the rich or a warning to people who are rich uh and we parse that out a little bit differently the second part is about patience and suffering so let's look at the first part one of the ways that i challenged the people in bible study this morning was to think about who are the rich and whether or not it's okay to be rich generally people think it's okay to be and and the, the thing is is one of the things that we usually don't think about is we usually do not count ourselves as rich that's one of the problems when it comes to understanding this or really being challenged by this because if you look at the world generally you see that we are and right? americans are really wealthy and we are all rich right we usually think oh rich means like jeff bezos or it means millionaires and billionaires and that's true it certainly does i'm not saying that doesn't count as rich but two people who are living in Bangladesh or in Cambodia, the amount of wealth that Americans have is at that level to them, right? Just being able to have that much is crazy. I mean, uh, you know, if you ever really want to see how much it takes to like rent an apartment in some of these cities around the world, you realize that you could, if you live for, if you work from home, you could go there and live like a king, uh, making very middle class American salary. That's that's really how it is, and so I think that it's. Like we read this and we go, well, that's not, it doesn't apply to me. I don't need to worry about it, but really it does, especially for those of us who are living in a developed nations, a developed nation like the United States, even if we don't think ourselves to be rich, we are. One of the things that James does here though, is that's certainly a challenge to all of us, but he has a certain people in mind and it's people who are rich, but are using their wealth to oppress others or aren't paying their workers a fair wage and he tells them very bluntly that what they're doing is they're you know preparing themselves like cows prepare themselves for the slaughter they're fattening themselves up and god is going to come and uh, judge them and judge them appropriately and i think that that is something that you know we we need to remember as christians that if we live in sin and we don't think it's sin or we you know or we know it's sin but we do it anyway that we are heaping up condemnation on ourselves right yes we, we are saved by grace through faith but as james says faith without works is dead right if we just say we have faith but it doesn't affect our lives like the people he's talking about in this passage here then what, what does that mean what does that show who we really treat jesus as so he moves from that warning to other believers and maybe the people who are being oppressed the people he has in his mind here and what he's saying to them is to have patience which is not something we usually like to have especially when you start talking about stuff like this today i mean you think of like revolutions and stuff like that right people want change now and telling them to be patient is not what they want to hear but that is exactly what james says right he says you, you too need to stand firm because the lord's coming is near something that James is really big on. He, he tells the rich they need to be afraid because it's the last days. He's saying that the Lord is coming back and we need to have his attitude as Christians to understand that yes, Christ could come back any second. It doesn't mean we don't try and repair damage uh, or stem the damage that is down here on earth, but it doesn't mean that we uh, just uh, are so focused on earthly things that we forget that the true judge is coming, right? He tells us that he's standing at the door, something that Jesus himself makes reference to in Revelation. So I think that these passages are really good because they cause us to see both sides of this issue and understand that, you know, we have to be really conscious about the way that we carry ourselves in the world, the way we are consumers and 
things like that. But at the same time, we also need to understand that it doesn't fall on us to right all injustice of the world because we won't be able to. Instead, we need to stay patient and firm in the Lord. Just the very last part, that last verse where he talks about swearing oaths and swearing, it's not talking about cursing, but it's but it's important in the general scheme of things because if we are to be patient and be showing people the Lord, we have to be trustworthy, right? We have to be trustworthy like our Lord is trustworthy, so we can't be going back on our promises or making rash oaths, but we don't have any intention to fulfill. I was challenged on this while I was in seminary, and I've really tried to not say, I promise, to say your promise you're going to do something. I've really tried to stop saying that and get it read in my vocabulary and simply say yes or no, because it holds you to a much greater bar. And anytime I have to cancel plans or something that I made, I always feel, I don't want to say guilty, but I sometimes I do. But I, I never want to. I never want to feel that way. I want to make sure that people know when I'm going in that I I care about that. So, um, but do I always do this perfectly? No, none of us do. But I think it's really important to be challenged to be as truthful and honoring of our promises as as we can. So there's a lot more you can go into there, but uh, I'll save that for another time. I hope you guys have a good rest of your Wednesday. I will see you next week as we finish up the book of James, and we'll see where we head to next. Have a wonderful day. Peace out.